welcome to this week's Talking Cods Wallop. I am Gemma. I'm James. I'm also scared. <laughs> yeah, we're scared for the same reason as we were last yes, week, we guys. Yes, we are scared for the same reason. <laughs> Technology is against us. This is, is this the start of the, the Terminator world? Is Skynet going to overthrow things? Or are we Maybe. just experiencing really poor technology? Who knows? We'll Who soon knows? find out. Well, yeah, I'm in the process of updating another uh, laptop. So fingers crossed that is the end of our problems. Who knows? This Let's audio might be so. perfect. You know. It might. Yeah, it Perhaps might be. be perfect in every way. Like my God tier driving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sorry, not... all I heard was all I heard was agreement then. Oh really? Oh really? Oh yeah. really? <laughs> it's not about the car you drive, it's about the driver in it. Do you know what I mean? Well, exactly. You know, so basically all bases are covered for me because I have to disagree. It is the car you drive, it's the person in it as well. So yeah, God to Anyway. Yeah. So are you saying that you would be a bad driver if you drove anything but an Audi? I'd still be a dri- a good driver but I wouldn't be the God-tier level of driving that comes with the uh, the ownership of an Audi or a BMW. Right. Either of these vehicles turn you into a superior road user as soon as the keys are handed to you. Or as some days to work described it, uh, the twat gene yes. uh, is given to you as soon as the keys are handed to you. I agree with your friend. <laughs> <laughs> and he also informed me that if, you, if I got a Range Rover, which was the natural step up for me, uh, I uh, well, I would go from having the twat Gino degree to having some sort of twat professorship by driving mm-hmm. a Range Rover. So that is obviously the next logical step for me that I, I ascend to the that other tier uh, where all road users around me are wrong. I mean, they're wrong to begin with anyway. Mm-hmm. We know that as an Audi driver, you're all wrong. And I'm obviously right. Right. So, yeah, it's it's the only way to be. <laughs> so, basically, when you pick up your keys for an Audi, you yes. th- automatically get an air of shitdom. <laughs> you say that. I say this air of superiority and confidence mm. and, you know, safety and knowledge that you know you're right. So. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought you said something, but it was covered by coughing, which I understand was you choking on the the uh, the feelings of inadequacy and uh, wishing that you had an Audi yourself. I get it. I no. get it. It's all right, people. No, I purposely don't want an Audi because I don't want to be horrible. <laughs> Sorry, I just heard you say because I don't want to be brilliant. <laughs> But it's all right. I can dig it. <laughs> if only this was visual. <laughs> what does my middle finger mean, James? <laughs> Gratitude that you work with somebody who uh, who has an Audi. <laughs> I see. Yeah, you're number one. You're number one. <laughs> 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 that's exactly what i was meaning by that hmm. absolutely yes yes <laughs> and the two-fingered salute i understand that one as well yeah oh no you're definitely just the the number one not the two <laughs> numbers <laughs> you're the vicious one i mean the 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 positive one <laughs> 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 or the read between the lines this, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on this week's car corner. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can we can move off of uh, cars corner now because yes. to be honest, I'm a superior driver because not only am I female, I am a wonderful driver because I've been taught properly. So it doesn't matter what kind of car I drive because I am superior. <laughs> And this is when Owen's quickly typing on uh, Facebook saying, mm, there's a number of times I've been in the car with you, Jem. <laughs> and I'm, you're right. <laughs> I I couldn't possibly comment. I could not possibly comment. I'm saying nothing. Nah. But I am going to ask a question of you, Jem. How has your week been so far? Well, so far it's only Monday. So it's all mm-hmm. downhill from this here. This <laughs> No, on a serious note, I think I got out of bed on the on the um, doofus side of the bed this morning because <laughs> literally I so I was at work and I was doing stuff. I mean, it was a couple of problems that <laughs> a couple of problems that were like from the past. So past Gemma mm. made a couple of mistakes that future Gemma had to sort of rectify, and 
it's in the process of doing, you know, so it's all good. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I just, I just seem to just make the most stupidest of mistakes today. It's ridiculous. Okay. Like, like I went to, um, I was reading through my emails, and instead of mm-hmm. opening up something, I closed my entire inbox down. I was like, "Are you actually stupid today?" <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a very unique way of dealing with emails. I mean, don't like them. <laughs> Close. Yeah, oh, that may be why I didn't have many today. <laughs> that could be it. Yeah, you haven't even turned the computer on. Very quiet today, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, it was quite a quiet day today. So, I mean, with regards to that, I mean, nothing else has really spectacularly happy, uh, happened, sorry, apart from... Um, yeah, the fact at lunch I popped out to Asda and Lidl. I wasn't supposed to be mm-hmm. going to Lidl as well, but okay. um, the dog dog is, uh, only likes a specific food. So, uh, you know, and, and to be fair, he's not overly fussy about most things. He'll eat most things, but yeah, this just this one brand of food that he really likes. And uh, luckily I got the last bag, thankfully, that, you know. Um, but it kind of was a bit of a pain in the butt because I had to go to adult ad, adult I had to go to adult Ad, I thought you were say I had to go to an adult Aldi no. or something. No, and just combining Asda and Aldi together. Um sorry, in Lidl together in fact. Um yeah, so yes, yeah, so I went to Asda for the human food and then uh mm-hmm. had to then trek all the way across town to go to Lidl to uh pick up the dog food. But there we have it. And it- and it's the dog food, what we commonly call the postal flesh flavour. It is, yes, it's beef. <laughs> <laughs> he is a little bit fussy when it comes to his food. Mm-hmm. But then if you've got to eat the same thing day in, day out, three days, uh, three times a week, um, not three times a week, three, three days times. a week. Wow, <laughs> that's harsh. So this is how you keep him lean and mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely you know actually, racing thin he's getting a bit porky to be honest because we keep ah. giving him a few little tidbits here and there and then mm-hmm. it's like i think we need to stop soon but yeah if you were to have the same thing three times a day every single mm-hmm. day you know i think after a while you get a bit bored as well so the i'm going to ask you this question then which is interesting because you made me think that's quite an interesting idea mm-hmm. if you had to eat the same thing you're only allowed to eat one food yeah for the rest of your life three times a day as you're torturing the poor dog i mean feeding the poor dog by doing <laughs> uh, what would you go for yeah do you know it's actually funny because we we're on the same wave, uh, wavelength then because i was actually toying with the idea of asking you the same question so obviously it's back at Twilight you as well zone. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i don't know instantly pasta related mm-hmm. something pasta, pasta related interesting yes i love pasta and mm-hmm. I also love peas. <laughs> I know it's so really pasta weird. Pasta and peas could be our combination. It could You're be. You're only allowed words of being with pea. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and <laughs> peanut. No. <laughs> potatoes. Potatoes. No, I don't think. <laughs> I don't, uh, potatoes are overrated, I think. You know, like, I mean, you get so many different varieties of potato, but, you know, <laughs> it's... Uh, you know, you got your Aunt Bessie's. <laughs> Ooh, fancy. Um, no, um, I don't... That really took me a second to work out because I was thinking there's a variety of potato called Aunt Bessie, and I realised it's the ones you just put in the oven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the branded ones that are already sort right. of prepped for you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't use them, but, you know, it's just that I knew that about them. We used to use them. They're quite tasty, to be honest. Um... Oh, I don't, I don't know, James. Do you know what yours oh, would be first, and then I can have a little pr- think. Pr- probably, if I was going to be honest, something that I I was eating, uh, having you know quite a lot of uh, recently, would probably be sushi. I really do like Ooh. sushi, and by doing that, I could have an all encompassing variety of different meals. So if I just said sushi and then went for that as a big spread, I actually wouldn't limit myself to like one thing. I yeah. could just say, give me a platter of it and I'll have this, this or this. So yeah, sushi. But then, I mean, technically that's that's good and that's a good call because mm-hmm. I like sushi too. So, you know, I might mm-hmm. have to join you. But equally, it's not the mm-hmm. same thing every day. 
you know what okay, I mean? I mean, so it, it was going to, well, uh, okay, so to be more specific, for the sushi, I would go with the, the you can get like a spicy tuna roll, so I'd go with oh, that yeah. one. Okay. And then I'd develop mercury poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> eating fish constantly all the time but if you gotta go you know all, all worms you know all intestinal worms from eating raw fish yeah yeah definitely um but it has to be said sushi is amazing um yeah mm -hmm. i love it um yes we'll need to meet up and go for sushi sometime james yes. that would be lovely yes. <laughs> it would no. be very good and no. i can eat huge globules of um the wasabi stuff yeah. so cleaner than anything Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you know what? I'm going to have spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. Okay. That's my meal, spaghetti bolognese, because yep. I really love it. And, um, yeah, I don't think – I probably would get bored of it, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. and especially if it was for breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner. That seems a bit extreme, doesn't it? But, you know, I probably will well, skip you breakfast. <laughs> You could have a bit of varying because some days you could have Parmesan cheese, some days you couldn't have Parmesan cheese on, you know. That, yeah. you, Might have you a bit could of have cheddar. a slight alteration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not not only of that evil blue cheese or anything like that, but yeah. See, I love blue cheese. I absolutely yeah. love blue cheese. Yeah. I probably shouldn't eat it because it has penicillin in it, but I do love it, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's definitely a market out there for weirdos like you who like mouldy cheese. But there you are. Um, but that's... See, Gemma, we've just got to improve your palate. And uh, we'll start oh, okay. by finding you some strange fermenting stuff that you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I was actually toying with the idea of maybe trialling some bits and pieces like on the podcast or doing it like a mm -hmm. video kind of thing. Um, but yep. we both try stuff and, you know, like, you know, sort of say, oh, uh, you know, like what this, com you know, different combinations of things mm -hmm. like, I don't know, cheese and peanut butter or whatever. Those are two things that I've randomly picked out of um, out of the air there. But, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking that it might be, you know, might be quite interesting or we could compare oh. like American sweets to uh, British sweets or something. You know, for the diabetic to uh, obviously uh, mention that, you know, <laughs> it's obviously a good idea. <laughs> yeah, what's that? The the the, uh, the illness episode where you like make yourself really really well by doing that. Um, yeah. On the food thing, it'd be interesting. The stuff I'd love to try is really hot stuff, like really really spicy stuff, because I do like spicy food. I, I yeah. eat that quite a lot, so I'd love to try certain stuff. Like I was currently going through a a, a big jar of like. Uh, I think it was like scorpion pepper sauce. Okay. Uh, trust me, that will clean your sinuses out if you need enough of it. <laughs> it will clean your sinuses. Yeah, sorry, go on. It, it'll clean your entire innards out. It's like, <laughs> good God, it's, I mean, it's very good, but it's very hot. Yeah. And it hits. It's I was going to say, stuff. I was going to say that it's, uh, it cleans your sinuses out starting from your bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Running upwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like drinking Drano. Oh, oh God! Well, I was I was thinking that we could both do it, and I don't know that mm -hmm. I really want to do that because probably a korma's the most spicy that I have. But um, see, now, now I want you to do it just to see the effect it has on you. Of course, she's 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 gone. She's collapsed. Yeah, I suppose one day, you know, if we get enough, mm -hmm. if we get enough people wanting us to do it. You know, yes. maybe, maybe I'll do that. But What uh, about, i tell you what, here's the one we can go with. I go would on. try, if we've got enough people, I'll do the one chip challenge. Well, I would do it too if we've got enough people yes. as well. Yes. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't do the whole thing because you don't necessarily mm. have to do the whole thing to get the um, sensations and stuff like that. But uh, I definitely, you know, maybe I could come around your house at one point, mm -hmm. you know, we could do it together and share a crisp. <laughs> <laughs> We could also make the we could also put together make the required ambulance call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can maybe I'll um I'll bring Lucy Caton up with me and she can uh, she can be on medical um yes. duties. <laughs> well what would happen is the the heat would probably hit both of us that much that one of us would dial and the other would attempt to speak. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well okay let's make it a mission the next year mm -hmm. we get together 
somewhere. Yes, one chip um, challenge. Yeah, and not just that necessarily. We could, you know, torture ourselves for like a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get the content. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James! James is uh, so thinks that's so funny that he had to mute himself because probably he started coughing halfway through there. But there you are. <laughs> that's true. That, yeah. that is true. That is exactly what happened. You know, so you know me too well on that front. Yeah, yeah. I'm also trying to not blow my nose while. Uh... Thank you. You know that's appreciated. You know, last week I said, um, sorry, we'll get onto your, actually, no, I'll leave that for a moment because that uh, could lead into Cod's Wallop. So how is your week going so far? As you said, it's only Monday, but it's not done gone too badly, as I did say to you earlier. The weather here has been like, I've been living in a perpetual horror film for two days. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living in a <laughs> You a live perpetual in the, horror film for two days. You live in the moors, of course. It's going I to be live in like... the moors. Yeah, but I'm not expecting this constant mist. It's like, am I going to get savaged by a giant hound at some point? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you could. It could be like a Stephen King novel or something. I was thinking more the Hound of the Baskervilles rather than Stephen King, but we can obviously combine those two things together. But yeah, it's not been bad. It's so far, touch wood, not too bad. Not too bad. But I'm intrigued. What is your cod's wallop? Yeah, my cod's wallops this week. Um, believe it or not. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I was going to say, come on, Gem Hulk, what have you got? <laughs> we recorded last week's episode on the Friday and today's Monday and I've already got some mm-hmm. cod's wallop. So, um, well... <laughs> So enraged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that the queue at Lidl was quite annoying. Um, I mean, not because of the staff or anything like that, but just the amount mm-hmm. of old people, you know. <laughs> there should be a set time. You know You know when there was a pandemic? I mean, mm-hmm. it still technically is a pandemic. Yes, but yes. But in the early days when we had to protect the elders and we uh, said to them, you know, they can go to the shop between 9 and 10 or 9 and 11, you know, get their shops so that they're all protected. Can we bring that back, please? Because during the daytime, old people are annoying as well. <laughs> I prefer not to have the old people out in the early hours. The other one that really gets me is, uh, uh, I'm going to segue into your Codswall piece, yeah. the thing of, have you ever noticed that on the... Uh, if you're retired, I assume you have the entire week to do things. Yep. But at the weekend, when you'd have people like old people cluttering up like the banks and shops and building societies. Yes. Yeah. And but I the used thing to... is, we, we. Sorry, go, go on. on. No, you carry on. You carry on. Well, we will be there one day. And frankly, I look forward to the time when I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah, absolutely and um it, well in the sort of real old real olden times when i used to work in a shop which i'm not that old so it shouldn't be that old wow <laughs> w- was it like hang on how old are you was it was this are you trying to tell secret you're about 90 yep you just age really, really well. I, I do. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I am a vampire. That okay. wouldn't surprise me, you know. The rage, the anger. Mm-hmm. The only coming out at night. <laughs> That's true. The fear of daylight. <laughs> yeah. The fact that my skin reflects the sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's this new treatment that us vampires get which is basically it's mm. like a paste that you put over your skin and i'm going on so, the fun so tangent here. What, <laughs> what you're telling me is that the, the ceramic coat you yeah yeah pretty much cool. so that you know basically you know a bit like you know twilight i mean i say it loosely but you know with the sparkly vampires which sparkly vampires do not exist can i just say um that you know even if you've not watched the films or read the books, you still know the reference, I'm assuming, James. Unfortunately, yes, I did see Good. the first film because the girl I was going out at the time was into them. So I ended up seeing it. It was it was all right. It, yeah. it wouldn't have been my choice. I, what, are there like three or four of the films or something? I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I think there was four in the end. Um, but to be honest, I read the books um, and I actually quite mm-hmm. enjoyed the books apart from I just wanted to kill Belle. Bella or whatever her name was um I actually wanted to turn her into a vampire myself but there you are um so yeah so yeah being a vampire that I am um Mm -hmm. (laughs) because that's Mm -hmm. where I was going with it it. all makes sense it all makes sense (laughs) yeah um it's none of that sparkly bullshit yeah it's just white paint just 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so basically, you just like roll around in emulsion, yeah. and then uh, yeah, it all yeah. makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So that that took us off on a uh, wonderful little path there. So it did, it did. <laughs> but it's all right. I can bring you back where you once were. You were on about your your hatred of old people. So yeah. let's talk about this. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not the hatred of old people in general, but it's just when you're in a shop, and no, um, it is, it is. She I hates know. old people. I know. Actually, I prefer old people to children. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> but when I used to work in a shop. Um, Mm -hmm. I used to always get, you know, like I always get people sort of being uh, sort of coming in complaining sort of thing. Um, not at me or whatever, but you know, Mm -hmm. the fact that old people used to come in sort of between the hours of seven and eight or seven and nine, Mm -hmm. let's say to actually pick up their newspaper and they'd take so long to do it. And it's obviously Mm -hmm. that's those sort of hours are like rush hour, aren't they? For like Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. going to work and stuff. So, oh God, it used to be so frustrating because it was like, yeah, I know, I know. There's nothing I can do about it. Is that, (laughs) but you know, it is. But uh, yeah, just at Lidl today, it was, uh, I mean, it was already frustrating that I had to go there because Asda didn't sell the food. Um, So Mm -hmm. bad Asda. But, um, yeah, and then I had to stand in the queue for a good five minutes. It felt like five, five minutes. It felt, minutes. It probably felt longer than five minutes, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt like five hours, didn't it? <laughs> it did, yeah. And uh, and then I was sort of like, oh, crap, I better quickly get home because uh, I'm nearly late getting back from lunch. So uh, but- my, my, my other personal favourite in shops mm. is this, and I'm going to get in trouble. But women seem to be more to do this more than men. Okay. This almost moment of surprise that they have to pay and the purse comes out. I know. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. You feel like going, if you stood in the queue, you feel like going, what did you think was going to happen? I know. It's ridiculous, <laughs> isn't it? It's like, I mean, it's not so, it's not so much with our generation, I don't mm-hmm. think. I think it's maybe the older generation because... We've always got like our phones handy, you know. Sometimes mm-hmm. you've got the contactless on your phone, sort of thing. You, you know, That's true, card yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're we're quite adapted to the sort of contactless kind of method and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, definitely. I uh, yeah, I even witnessed that kind of today. But it was actually a man. Um, but then it was to be fair. They had, mm-hmm. um, the wife was running around after the child. So it may be, it may have been the wife's fault. It mm. might have been just the child's fault, to be honest. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I know I said it, I generally see more women, I don't want to cast any aspersions. I'm sure all genders can do it. So, yeah. you know, well, it's, it's, it's whatever it is. But yes, I always do love seeing that thing of that, that moment of surprise. You actually do have to pay, you yeah. can't just walk out with the stuff. <laughs> I know, I mean, you could, but you hmm. are likely to get arrested. So uh, try not to do oh, that, the, folks. The, the the other one that I like to see in shops, and I always find this quite amusing. It's interesting that this has turned into a combined codswell up uh, yeah. for both of us. Is the people who will you know? There's a sign that says this this till is card only, and yep. they don't turn. And it, it's like there. I remember listening to a shop assistant going, like muttering to herself after because I was paying with my card obviously but the people yeah. that then had to go to another till and she's like it's there on a sign <laughs> it's quite obvious card only i know it's a bit like it again asda oh god you know clearly asda pissed me off today as well as little oh but... Gemma's getting it bad from asda <laughs> no, 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 no. they have to find me first <laughs> um no it's uh, it's more it's more people you know like in general you know it's like mm-hmm. In in our Asda, <laughs> Gem Hawk. Yeah, I hate people. <laughs> I do. I genuinely hate people. This kind of system works where I don't have to like visually <laughs> stand next. I mean, you. <laughs> I would like stand next to you. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it's like I'm I'm more than happy to communicate. <laughs> that was a very to good back. That was a very good backpedaling, Gem. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for a while now. <laughs> true. True. But um, yeah, I mean, communicating like this is uh, is a good way forward, you know. Especially like when it comes to work and stuff like that, you know. What are you banging? 
Oh, see the anger, the anger, salt apple, so angry. Uh, I was, I was taking a drink and putting my cup down. Uh, well, dirt quieter. Um, I was in the middle of a rant, and then you, you interrupted yes. it with a bang. With more anger, yes. I know, I know. And um, yes, yeah, so anyway, the in Asda there is a. Um, so basically, you've got the self-checkouts now. I'm not sure if you've, you've got it with your local Asda or whatever. but um, or, I don't so, shop at Asda, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Sorry. self-checkout, I can visualise it. It's yeah. all good. Sorry, I, I forget that, you know, we're two different classes of people. Uh, Marks and Spencers. That, I don't know. <laughs> Marks and Spencers, Lidl and Aldi, you know. Um <laughs> <laughs> now, anyway, there's, so there's two um, self checkouts. So there's one for trolleys. It's, it's mm-hmm. quite clear which one's which because it's got a picture of a trolley above it, and it says self checkout. It's got a trolley above it. <laughs> what is it? Self checkout for trolleys. Mm. You would think so, yeah. And then the other one has got self self checkout, and it's got a basket underneath. So guess what that one is, there's James? A, there's, well, there's a distinct difference there. One, I would hazard a guess, is for a trolley. The other mm-hmm. one is for a basket. Wow. I wish you'd been in Asda with me today. Because the, <laughs> the person in front of... Well, there was a lady in front of me who was in... She had a trolley. I had a trolley. And to be fair, with the amount of stuff that I had in it, I could have probably have had a basket, but I didn't know mm. at that point. But... um. Yeah, and then the man that, who was in that, front of... Hang on, just a minute. That, that's really like an old person thing, pushing your trolley around with next to nothing in it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not old. <laughs> could you do, no, but that's you preparing, you see. Could, and did you do it really slowly and create a big queue of people behind you? No. That's your next step. That's your next step, preparing, <laughs> training yourself. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I'll get there. But no, I thought I was getting like dog food and stuff like that, and I didn't want to be carrying mm-hmm. that around because it's obviously really heavy. So... um. But obviously that didn't happen. Anyway, so there was a man with a basket in front of the lady mm-hmm. in front of me. And I was like, are mm-hmm. you seriously stupid? He had like... Clearly he, he was not reading the signs. Probably. No. I think people just need... Uh, maybe people need an eye test as they walk through the door. Mm-hmm. Then, you know... So it's, it's what it, it, sorry, I'm suspecting you felt what we what I've commonly started terming the need for the slappening yes. to resolve problems. But I also have found in shops and how weird that we now turn this into a complaint about shops, Connor. But it is our Codswell people, so learn to appreciate and enjoy it. Yeah. That putting it so you you know, you the idea is that you put in these self checkouts to improve mm-hmm. things. They seem to be failing at doing this. They've put them in the, I know it's they've they've the the number of them has increased in Marks and Spencers. Yes, I do shop there. Shoot <laughs> me people. But it slowed things down. Um it's not you know, you've gone from having tills that would have somebody working on them for people who only had a basket or a few items and they get through pretty quickly and now yeah. you've got people, some of them are older, some and you know, or not as tech savvy, trying to use the self service stuff and it's just slowing everything down. It is not working. So my heating's just kind of on as well. So uh, if there's noise in the background, I do apologise. Um, apparently, dung, 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 that noise, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> apparently, so apparently it's cold right now. Uh, I don't think so, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so if people dung, can, dung, dung. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly it. Can you actually hear yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. You know. I can't, but that was just a wild guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all right. <laughs> so anyway, so that I mean, we spent quite a bit of time actually talking about um, our cod's wallet with regards to um, shops, shopping, and, <laughs> and people there. <laughs> the, shopping and the general hatred of people from Gemma <laughs> <laughs> and James. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. Well, less general hatred of people. Uh, for me, it's just more interesting observation. But with Gemma, it's rage. Yeah. And she's not like the Hulk, in the fact she's green. She's white. Yes. Be I afraid. Am. <laughs> I am. I definitely am. And I'm a redhead, naturally. So there you have ah. it. I'll eat your soul for dinner. <laughs> if you I like. forgot about the redhead. The fear. <laughs> the fear. <laughs> the horror. <laughs> the terror. Um, yeah, I was talking with dyeing my hair, but... Um, I don't know what colour to do. But anyway, that's, I suppose that's not Purple. really... Purple? Cool. Purple? 
Purple. I was thinking purple. Just, yeah, go wow, purple hair. Yeah, I was thinking purple. So like a nice vibrant purple. But uh, yeah, I know. I, I, I'm I'm clearly not on. I, I'm clearly taking us completely off onto different directions tonight, guys and gals. It's all good. <laughs> it'll, it's all good. It'll just the tadpoles are useless. It's the confusion system that we operate. That we go. What we're on? What this week? <laughs> right there we go i need to write that down confusion system that might be the mm. episode title <laughs> who knows said that last week and it was something different anyway <laughs> it's all right i'm yeah the confusion system yeah yeah so i think i'm done with codswallop because i feel like i've uh, had a good old moan about one thing so <laughs> you vent, you've yeah. vented enough have you got any codswallop this week I'd say our primates will run with the cods wallop that you uh, that you have said about. They're just the interesting observations about when people are shopping. Mm-hmm. That I've seen the same sort of thing in banks and places where there's a big queue. But touch wood, I haven't got too many other. Uh, I haven't got much else on the cods wallop front. So no. But then the week is only young, so you know by it next week it is only week... young. So <laughs> by by the end of the week, I could be frothing at the mouth in yeah. a. <laughs> yeah, we'll just have to start writing them down because next week we've already got a um, interview booked in, haven't we? So we have, um, we have, we've so, got we've got a special guest. Yes, which uh, well, did you want to tell the salty tadpoles who's coming on? Or uh, yeah, we yeah. Uh, we yes, yes, we have uh, we've been lucky enough to uh, to be able to uh, have an interview with Victoria, who runs a wonderful, amazing. Uh, podcast and youtube site called the bond room unlocked Mm -hmm. uh i have had some involvement in that and i was also lucky enough to meet victoria in person yes in the flesh when i was at the cuban music show in buxton yeah which is um which is amazing and hopefully i've got my fingers still crossed that i will be able to be on that recording but obviously guys my internet and my computer and whatnot has obviously not been fantastic of late. I'm not even certain if this is going to work properly. So um, if I'm not on that episode, you know, James will still do a grand job. I know you will. So it's all good. Indeed, I will do my best. Indeed. And hope, but hopefully you will be able to join us and the hexed laptop will... Uh, uh, will 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 no longer be hexed. It will be yeah. cleansed of all evilness. But who knows? Yeah, we shall see. <laughs> oh, I know something else as well. You know, yes. um, you know how last week I picked on my brother. Yes. To uh, you know the fact that he had the crazy um dash uh, not dashboard desktop. I kept saying okay, dashboard yeah. last week. I do want to correct myself. It's actually a mm-hmm. desktop. So there's probably a lot of okay. people that are going desktop to me. I know now. Sorry. Apologies. It's uh, all had, good. I'm yeah. starting to wonder if your brother's hex does actually. So, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he may have done. But in the in the um, sort of interim of me changing mm-hmm. over the computers, I, mm-hmm. um, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll try and clean this current one up for a bit. And uh, mm-hmm. obviously, I'm still working on the other one. I feel like I'm very IT minded. You know, I've got people in the background helping me as well, though. Um, and so I went through my mum's photos because she's the only one who's got photos on the computer. And the state, she and my brother, they're definitely family. Let's put it this way. Okay. That it was all over the place. And in the end, mm-hmm. I just, I, I, it took me about an hour, I'd say, mm. to sort out all of the photos. And I like put them into um, different groups. So it was like family, friends. Uh, flowers and landscapes <laughs> yeah and it's just like miscellaneous filled them a random people yeah well no it was like flowers and landscapes there were so many pictures because she's an artist there were so many pictures mm-hmm. of like flowers and landscapes I was like ugh but then holiday pics sometimes you know James you just take pictures of food don't you <laughs> <laughs> food uh, yes i mean clearly people with an artistic bent and a wonderful mind take pictures of food there is actually part another reason i do do that right uh, which is the fact that uh it annoys people <laughs> it does 
It's like, yeah. yeah, you go on. I mean, James hasn't been on holiday for ages, but uh, no. it just reminded me that, uh, yeah, the last time that I, he said, did you do you want to see my holiday pics? I was like, oh, yeah, go on then. That'll be nice. And uh, yeah, expecting to see pictures of maybe him and his dad or a friend. No. What meal he had every evening. I mean, it looked lovely, you know. It's, uh, the, the, they were framed perfectly, you know. You're a very well, good yeah, photographer, you know, you, but... You, you... <laughs> it's not just you that I do it. It's a, it, uh, it wasn't you that I did it to know people, but I do find it it winds some people up. So for slight amusement, I do do it. Uh, yeah, the mischievous evil side of me yeah. uh, enjoys doing that. So <laughs> that's fair enough. If you get some weird sort of kink out of it, then you know you carry yeah, on. Maybe. There are worse kinks to have than taking pictures of food because it annoys people. <laughs> well, you know, other people who have other kinks probably think otherwise. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, semper annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed this episode has been very food related? This week. It has. Do you think we could both be hungry by any chance? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I or don't that... think I'm hungry. <laughs> or we both got tapeworms. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, that would be quite <laughs> that good. That want feeding. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure it would be. Is this like this? I'm, yeah, there was always a. There was once a fad on tapeworms mm-hmm. that uh, it was. I think it was in the Victorian times. People used to try and get infected on purpose because they thought they could lose weight. Not just. Vic- not just Victorian times, James. It's up really? until the like the nine uh, the nineties and early noughties people were doing it. Ah, that's yeah. messed up. That's yeah. not a good idea. I heard a thing on the radio about somebody who'd got uh, worms that are in his body. I think uh, I can't remember how they said how he got them, but they they like infected his brain. So yeah, oh, not a good god. idea, people. Not a good idea. Oh god. And I mean, what happens if you? <laughs> God, now we're going down the road. It infected his brain, right? We'll, we'll we'll try and not linger on this too long, because it's horrific. But it basically it really will mess you up. They have to hit to. It was like I think he was losing his sight. He oh my god! To hallucinate. He was having, he was having some really horrible symptoms. You you be you get delusional. You get paranoid. You get all these other problems. Um, and to sort it out, they have to give you unbelievably strong um drugs to resolve it so you put on like courses of antibiotics that it's they can uh, probably kill you with the antibiotics from what i remember them saying because they're that strong so yeah. yeah be safe people don't eat undercooked pork is the big one okay well i better get rid of this tapeworm then <laughs> yes you better yeah i would recommend it that raw bacon that you're intending to chow down on is probably not the best move no nah, probably not <laughs> no i like my food but unfortunately that's why i like my food so you know but there we have it but um food's you know. good food is good food is good but sadly my tummy keeps growing so that's the only problem <laughs> but uh oh. yeah well you know um but actually it's kind of leaned me towards another question which i was thinking about earlier um is there i know we've already covered if we were a dog and we (laughs) could only eat one thing (laughs) one thing a day for like the rest of our lives but Mm -hmm. if you were in a um what they called the eating contest or whatever it is oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah, an eating contest. Yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah, yeah. You're doing like the speed eating and stuff like that. What mm-hmm. what one thing would you like it to be? What you know? What item? The food? Because like I kind of answer. I'll answer first because go on, you go first. Yeah. Um. So if I had like a big plate of chocolate eclairs, I think that would be really good. I mean, again, diabetes. I probably shouldn't be thinking this way at all, but I love a chocolate eclair. But also mm-hmm. they're quite light, mm-hmm. you know, because they're quite light in, um, you know, obviously the chocolatey part is uh, quite, quite makes it quite sort of like heavy, I suppose, in some ways. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think I could chow down on quite a few of them. Uh, I would probably go with like a broth because if it's for speed, uh, yeah. That that's probably easier to, to 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 consume. How many people do speed eating with broth? None. That's why I would win. 
<laughs> I was going to say, I've never heard of that. It's like, yeah, I think... That's why I would win people. Yeah. I mean, if if I was to sort of pick one for like Andy, I think it would be Jaffa Cakes for him. Yeah. 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 Death by Jaffa Cakes because he just... Yeah. Pop, 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 pop. yeah pop, um, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, probably would be something like a broth, just because I've got a better chance of winning with that. Um, there's actually there's an interesting guy who does. Uh, is it beard meat food? He's called. Yes, I've seen. I've he seen the videos. Yeah, go on though. He did one here. He actually did one in uh, where I live. Um, okay. Many quite a few years ago now at a restaurant I've been to actually, but I, uh, I never took up the challenge. But you could win like a holiday somewhere if you could complete this meal. But yeah, his stuff's very interesting. How the hell he does some of it is beyond me. Because no, wow. Yeah, I mean he he's got a massive, he's got a massive following on uh, YouTube. Yeah. So this probably would never happen, but it would be quite interesting to reach out to him and actually see if he wanted to be a guest on the podcast. But yeah. Because he's really, he's like quite skinny as well, isn't yes. he? And it's like. I think he, I think he like does intensive, intensive exercise stuff yeah. though, to, to stay like that. So, yeah. 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 I kind of get that impression. And he's obviously not doing it every single day, I imagine. He's no. probably doing it like once a week or whatever. But yeah, I have seen that um, YouTube channel. Somebody at work mm -hmm. sent it to me. Um, my colleague Pete. Hi, Pete. Because he listens. Um, so, yeah. He was actually, yeah, I, I was actually watching one where I think it was um, macaroni cheese or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, he just, like, devoured the whole thing and all yeah. of the garlic bread and everything, you know. So, yeah. Ooh. It, 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 it is, it's quite an amazing thing. I can't imagine it's good for you, but it's quite an amazing thing to watch. And yeah. uh, uh, so so Pete listens, did you say, who you he work does. with? He does, yes. Yeah, uh, Pete, you'll have to get in contact and tell me what's that, what that is like, you know, listening to the show, because I, I, it's a foreign concept. To me, so <laughs> you can please explain it to me. <laughs> well, you know, how's he going to get in contact with you? Through me, I guess. But uh, <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> he's not on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you his number. You can text each other. <laughs> yes, he can explain it to me. I go, really? That's, that's how you'd listen to it? That's what it's like? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, dude. Just too out there for me too out there <laughs> idiot <laughs> well i think we've talked enough about food so should we talk about some stories of the week indeed we shall indeed, indeed. we shall did you want to go first or shall i go first oh I, I will go first. Go on, then. It's a bit visual, this one, but it okay. is. I think it's ingenious. So a lottery winner mm -hmm. won 26 million. <laughs> and one of the things I always find interesting is we win the lottery, the people who are there on the news going, yay, I won, woo. And I'm thinking, yes, that's a really smart way of getting kidnapped or hurt or, yeah. uh, you know. Or getting loads happened. of people calling you and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, the hanger on us. Yeah. Um, but there's a way of getting around that and showing who are kind of showing who you are. And this is what this person's done. I love it. They've dressed up as a something in yellow. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, an ice cream or something. Um, the article reads this. It's quite common to hear of lottery winners who want to remain anonymous due to not wanting lots of publicity or for people to treat them differently, as we said. But usually they just accept the money and don't do the photo shoot. Mm -hmm. One man in China has taken a different approach, however, after winning a huge 26 million. He appeared to accept his massive check in a bright yellow costume with oversized eyes and a big head. And someone said, <laughs> "What again, what is he supposed to be? Um, speaking to local reporters, he said, I'm really happy I won, but I don't want my family to know about this since they might become too arrogant and complacent in the future. The Fair man, enough. Uh, the man identified only as Lee, wore the get-up to face the media in Nanning City, uh, Guangxi province, and claimed his prize. He had booked a hotel in the city after learning he hit the jackpot on October the 21st and went to collect his money on October the 24th. Lee had hit all seven lottery numbers, netting a huge sum amounting to around 171.6 million yen, uh, 20.4 million after, uh, pounds that is, after taxes. He said, I only won a few dozen yen in the past. I regarded buying the lottery as a hobby, and my family does not care. Plus, I do not spend much money on it, and the lottery provides a ray of hope for me. 
-hmm. The lottery added that he's still thinking carefully about how to spend the windfall, but has donated 5 million yen, uh, uh, 600,000 pounds to charity. And being that this is a wonderfully researched and written Metro article, that's (laughs) where we end. We learn no more, we learn no less. (laughs) <laughs> That's it, people. There is also a, a typo in this that makes no sense where they put a full stop after a date and the letter P for no reason. <laughs> yep, I'm still fa- I'm still fact-checking you, Metro, and you have failed. <laughs> Fantastic. But, um, yeah, I think that's a really genius idea as well because, I mean, obviously it's great because that's what everybody sort of asks asks himself isn't it like if you won the lottery what would be the first thing you'd do but actually you know nobody thinks i'm gonna dress up in a costume and <laughs> go and take my photo yeah. <laughs> and, and if either of us win uh for the photo just to to i'm sure people would maybe tweak you dress up as a giant codswold fish oh god yeah <laughs> god yeah <laughs> that would be my first thought uh, thought completely you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the theme song would be playing in the background. <laughs> That's true. It might give it away to people, but you never know. Only to Some the books. listeners. Only to yeah. the tadpoles. That's sorry. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and if, if the tadpoles want any money and if I win the lottery, you know, they just have to reach out. But unfortunately, recently they haven't been reaching out. So I don't know. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's all right. I've forgiven them from last week. Um, right, let's go on to my story of the week. Cornish residents bummed out after B&Q names toilet after their town. (laughs) Oh no. This story is going to be flush with information. (laughs) Oh. Well, let's hope it, none of the information goes... You no, know, none of us feel like, you know, it's going down the pan as we learn about it. <laughs> let's hope it's not shit. <laughs> yeah. I just, I decided to give up on the, um, you know, <laughs> the playing with words. Let's actually just go with the big one. Um, okay. The rivalry between Cornish towns and the villages ha- uh, can be quite pronounced with those on each side of the camel trail existing that there's um that theirs is the best but friendly competitive turned uh, but friendly competitive turned foul some are now wondering exactly why one major town in the country uh, sorry one major town in the county has mm-hmm. now been honored by having a toilet named after it. Which one is it? Who has the seat of power? <laughs> <laughs> Who, yeah, indeed. I can't beat that, so I'm going to let you have it. Um, you can now hop down to B&Q on their website, you know, or in store, and buy the Bodmin <laughs> close coupled toilet and standard <laughs> close seat. Wow. I mean, you know, Bobman is pretty cool, though. You know, mm. yeah. My uh, my mum and Graham went to Bobman, not to the toilet, but um, I was going to say, is this like were they going to the toilet or were they going to the place? Yeah, no, they went to the place. So uh, yeah, okay. yeah, that was actually uh, that sounded actually a lot of fun because they went to the Bobman jail as well. It's something I really want to do now. Um, it's um open up. It's opened up like a museum, mm-hmm. so it's not actually. I was going to say, if you want to go to prison i'm sure you th- you rage at some point you will <laughs> well we got three on portland so you know i'm i'm all right i've got plenty that i can ah. go to <laughs> oh excellent Good and gary stuff. glitters at one of them <laughs> well if you want to visit you know mr gad feel free you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> and anyway b and q's kind of missed a trick here because it could be mm-hmm. bogman well exactly yeah. exactly they've missed the trick yeah, they have. Um, residents may not be too flattered by their town becoming a namesake, a namesake for the bog standard piece of plumbing. This is from the Metro guys. Mm, I kind of felt that it might be the thing with the way it was going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a exactly. Metro article, all right. Yeah. 
(laughs) And they may find the comparison even more smelly when they realise that at £75, £75, and that's in currency, not not in weight. Um, mm-hmm. It is <laughs> it is one of the cheapest on sale and mm. not one of the highest quality on sweet experiences. Oh, dear. Um, it, can, it can be brought alongside a Bodmin full pedestal basin for just £130 mm-hmm. in total, which is quite a good deal. To be fair, mm. um, Bodmin, which has a population of around 16,500 people in the seventh biggest town or city, seventh biggest town or city in Cornwall. Can it not decide mm. whether it's a town or a city? Clearly not. No. <laughs> no. And is historic. Historically important as a former count, uh, uh, count. Let me try again. As a former county town, it was mm-hmm. only uh, it was the only Cornish settlement to be entered into the Doomsday Book. Wow. However, That's part that. yeah, yeah, it's exciting. This has got nothing to do with the toilet, so. This, this is the other thing that the Metro does. They mm. just fill it with a load of shit. And they I'm do. not making do, a load. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> fill it with doo-doo. Mm. <laughs> However, parts of the town are far from the postcode tourist ideal of Cornwall. Um, with the town centre listed among the top percent uh, the top percent most deprived areas in England. <sighs> so why did B and Q name their toilet after it then? I suppose it was just I was because. Say, is it, it is it because it's literally a shitty area? <laughs> um, maybe. Who, who and and who who were the two places that there were? Because you mentioned there's them, isn't there? And then there's is it there's there's two different areas. Yeah, there's no so mention. This, right. So the the thing is, I've got to ask. Who wants to come number one? Who wants to come number two? <laughs> but a bump. <laughs> yeah, quite literal. Well, in that thing, yeah, literally, it's splashdown, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just doing a little, a little scout in here. Um, oh, hold on. B and Q has not only singled out Bobman among mm. Cornish destinations as a slightly more expensive toilet can uh has also been named falmouth so uh, they're number one <laughs> number looks one. like it yeah yep. currently on sale for 95 pounds down to 71 <laughs> Mees thinks this is just a giant advert for being cute. <laughs> I think it is as well. So we've moved on. Um, did you have another story or should we? I I had one more. And okay. if you can get the pictures, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a bit heartwarming, but I don't know if it's also sad at the same time. Okay. A monkey befriended a puppy, then stole oh. it and took it for a walk in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a cute one. So, a cheeky monkey in Bangladesh attempted to steal a man's best friend <laughs> by adopting a young puppy and carry it off into the treetops. The incredible scenes captured in Dhaka showed the primate scooping the tiny dog up in its arms and taking it on a walk through the woods in a local park. <laughs> the monkey can be seen petting and stroking his new friend just like humans do before whisking it off into the trees for a cuddle. Oh. Although this monkey probably meant well, the incident is just the latest in a series of unusual meetings between the two species, which don't always end well. Last year, a pet puppy had to be rescued after it was kidnapped by a stray monkey, who held it hostage for three days before its owners managed to reclaim it. Saru, a two-week-old black-and-white dog, was snatched by a primate in Malaysia and taken to the top of an electricity post, (gasps) where it refused any attempts to return the puppy to its humans. Onlocker, 
uh, Cherry Lee Yu, uh, sorry, Cherry Lu Yi Lee said the puppy looked tired and weary, but the monkey didn't seem to hurt it. The monkey was just holding the puppy while it moved around. Uh, it looked like it was treating the puppy as a friend or its Aww. baby. It was very strange. However, we still need to save the poor dog because it appeared to have been starving. Cherry and her neighbours attempted three times to rescue Saru, but the monkey kept running away onto that electricity lighter into the trees while holding the puppy. Eventually, they were able to rescue the puppy after throwing objects at the monkey until it dropped Saru into a nearby bush and ran away. A local later took Saru home to feed her and check for injuries, and eventually adopted the confused puppy after it was thought to be snatched from a local stray's litter. But although the dog slash monkey relationship can often seem one sided, it doesn't always turn out that way, doesn't you know, Gem? It doesn't. No. A Colombian dog. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, in this case, it (laughs) might be good. A Colombian dog ended up adopting a monkey in 2018 after tragically losing all five of her puppies. The baby monkey was introduced to the dog in a bid to lift its spirits, as well as give the monkey someone to rear it. The pair quickly became inseparable and often could be seen frolicking around together in their local neighbourhood with the monkey taking rides on its adopted mum's back. What some residents told us is the dog had a litter, but unfortunately, for unknown reasons, the puppies died, police officials said. And the monkey was also taken out of its habitat when it was very young. She, the dog, nursed it, fed it, and they have a relationship. The monkey will now not get down from the dog all day it's on its back. Officials had attempted to release the monkey, which was stolen by poachers and, hold, and, and sold on the black market back into the wild. But others say the bond between the two creatures is strong enough that they should be kept together. And that's the end of the article. And yeah. I have literally no idea what part of the article matches up to the other. Because I'm pretty sure that the dog that went up the uh, the the dog that was taken up the the electric pole mm-hmm. is not the same dog as is in the pictures being lo- being held onto by the monkey <laughs> Uh, I don't think that dog's even been covered very much, but there is a picture of the monkey on the back of the adopted mother's uh, back. And oh. I'm pretty sure, I, I can't actually tell in these pictures who's more terrified at which point, the monkey or the dog or the puppy. Because there are some, <laughs> the puppy looks uncomfortable, there's some scenes the monkey looks uncomfortable. Uh, but it is cute. Yeah, that is a lovely story. That's a really nice one. I don't know whether to carry on with my second story or not, really, because it's about bins. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Maybe I'll save it for next week. Or shall I do it? Because it's entirely up to you. What would you prefer to do? Take us from nice cuteness to evilness. (laughs) Do you know what, guys? I'm going to do it. Because, you know, how often often do you get to speak about wheelie bins, you know? That's that's true. Let's go. Let's go with the bins. Let's go with the bins. We've, I mean, you've discussed toilets, bins. It's all the kind of like in that strange getting rid of refuse. <laughs> yeah, so you did all the nicey nicey stories and I did all the did. weird and wonderful ones this week. Yeah. Um and the Crepisco ones. Yeah, exactly. Um so a German man really, really needs a purple bin only found in the UK to complete his collection. So if anyone's out there and you've got a purple wheelie wheelie bin and mm-hmm. you fancy, you know, selling it to this man, you know, just let me know and I'll I'll put you in the right direction. Um, I've never heard of the purple one, so that must be in a... I haven't either. No, so must be in a certain area. Some people like trains. Some people like stamps. But for Alexander surname cannot be pronounced um it's all about the bins it's all about the bins about the bins about the bins Mm. (laughs) no trash (laughs) um (laughs) you could say he's a really big fan um a german national has over a hundred full-size wheelie bins lined up in his garden at home but he only really wants uh, but the one he only re- sorry, but the one he really wants for his collection is only available in the UK. Mm-hmm. Alexander wants the rare purple um, Sulu 
240 litre bin so much he contacted a local newspaper in Buckinghamshire so I guess that's where it is um, Mm -hmm. the country that gave birth to his passion when he lived there for 15 years Um, weirdo Uh, (laughs) he he told the Bucks press uh, I have I have miniatures and and real wheelie bins from USA, Australia, France, UK and Germany. Almost every colour is available. The most valuable colours are purple, gold, silver and transparent. Who wants a transparent bin? That sounds gross. I don't know. The world's full of some unique individuals. So, yes, definitely. I mean, to be fair, if you think about things like the... Um, the, you know the the vacuum cleaners that you can see the the stuff in them. So I don't know. Some people must love them. I suppose. I suppose. But yeah. I don't. Yeah. Ugh. Um. Every time I'm searching for special wheelie bins, I'll contact the newspaper. I've had over eighty articles now, and every time was very successful in my search. So I wonder if he's been mm-hmm. successful this time. He wants his purple bin. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yeah. The Advid... Uh, Advid? A-V-I-D. How do you say that? Avid. 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 Yeah, I, I worked it out as I... Sorry. Um, the Avid collector is prepared to offer money to get his desired bin, but people often donate them to him for free. I would definitely be bumping up the price. They are bins mm. after all. They are. They're not. They're not free people. They're, they're not, not free. free. It, the, the person who donates the bin is going to have to replace their bin, isn't it? So correct. Yeah, the people are surprised and fascinated by my hobby. He says, uh, many brands and models went lost in the last twenty years. That's uh, that's why I collect special old things to save history. Some people tell me now I consider my weedy bin um, from another angle. Now I consider my weedy bin from another angle. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. There are a few purple Sulu. I think it's Sulu. It's S-U-L-O. I'm going with Sulu. Bins in circulation. The one from 2010 is much lighter and the older ones from 20, uh, 2002 sorry, are much darker in shade. And, and Alexander says they're beautiful. Um, so if you have a purple Sulu uh, that could do with a new home, please contact webnews at metro.co.uk and we will pass the message on. So there we have it, folks. Check your bins. Mm. There may be a German lurking in the background. <laughs> that made me laugh anyway. It's weird. <clears throat> it's yeah. weird. But, you know, whatever works for people, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? Indeed. Who are we to judge? Yes. We don't know what this guy... I'd love to know what started him out in his quest for bins, though. No. No. I, I, I think I would quite like to know that story as well. Um, but I have this fear that I also might be a little bit bored halfway through hearing it. Or so. <laughs> <all, all> terrified. <laughs> or terrified. <laughs> yeah. So it all started 15 years ago and he's doing really, oh, sorry, he's doing really, really well with it. So there we have it. <laughs> well, James, I think we've done another delightful episode this week. What do you think? It's gone from the sublime, the crap, to the rubbish, to wonderful, and back again. It's all good. It's and been slight- a good episode. And slightly cute as well with the uh, monkeys and the puppies. Cute. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. it has. It's been, it's been cute in those respects. Yeah. Um, and, and you've got to vent your rage, so that's always good. And we got to talk about food quite a lot as well, which, to be honest, I'm going to go and have my dinner now, I think. (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. I need to eat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in that case, then, I think we've been talking enough Cod's Wallet this week. I have been Gemma. I've been James. And I went very high pitched then when I said, I have been Gemma. So I noticed that Mm. and I thought I'd correct myself. (laughs) 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 Right. Let's click save. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.